Hi, everybody. It's April 1st. Happy Fool's Day. But this is no joke what I'm going to be showing you. We are already trapped. We're trapped in the surveillance grid that's only getting tighter and tighter every single day. I'm going to start this video with this video. If you're sleepy as well, if you're sleepy behind the wheel, some cars can tell and they'll take over. The car will take over. We are losing more and more control. Uh, every aspect of our life will be thoroughly controlled in this new world that is not coming. It's here. So drowsiness detection systems that monitor a vehicle's movements, such as steering wheel angle, lane deviation, time driven, and road conditions. When drowsiness is detected, drivers are typically warned with the sound and the appearance of a coffee cup icon. They've also developed sensors to be placed in the seat that monitor changes in heart rate, a camera based system which will monitor head and eye movements as well as body posture, heart rate, body temperature. And sensors on the outside of the vehicle will monitor <clears throat> the state of traffic in which the fatigued driver is engaged. And once vehicles can communicate with each other, a capability expected in the next few years, other cars will be able to take appropriate maneuvers to avoid the drowsy driver. Great. Don't you just think about this. The idea of just driving and suddenly your car is no longer in your control because the car's sensor, well, the car in front of you deviated into, you know, a lane and the person doesn't need to be sleepy or drunk. Um, and no accident will occur. It's just that split second uh, moment of uh, inattention. And suddenly your car is taken out of control. Well, it doesn't seem like a very good idea. Um, this is not a world that I will ever adapt to. Oops, Google failed to disclose secret microphone in Nest security system. Oh, we're sorry. Yes, we had a secret microphone in the Nest security devices that you bought from us. Smart light, Google and Amazon know when you are going to bed. And Amazon Ring security cameras. <laughs> Nest ring the ring provides to whomever is the research and development teams or whomever Amazon allows to uh, access the data unfettered access to folders that are put on cloud storage services. 
cloud storage service. Every video cr created by every Ring camera around the world, highly sensitive files that could be easily browsed and viewed, downloading and sharing these customer video files would have required little more than a click and Ring unnecessarily provided executives and engineers in the United States with highly privileged access to the company's technical support video portal, allowing unfiltered, round-the-clock live feeds from some customer cameras, regardless of whether they needed access to this extremely sensitive data to their jobs, to do their jobs. For someone who'd been given this top-level access comparable to Uber's infamous God Mode map that revealed the movements of all passengers, only a Ring customer's email address was required to watch cameras from that person's home. Wow! Well, surely egregious abuses of this technology are, well, they've already occurred and more likely to occur more frequently. Private battle coming from these home security cameras. So, Ring Video Doorbells, Nest Hello, and other connected security cameras are the fastest growing home improvement gadgets since garage door openers. These cameras, often built into buzzers, alert your phone when someone is at your door and save footage online. Police are setting up voluntary registries for private cameras in dozens of communities. See, Google, Amazon, law enforcement, government, they all work together. Uh, cities such as Washington, D.C. have begun paying up to $500 for cameras on private property. Detroit is going even further. Its mayor wants to mandate security cameras at businesses open late with a live feed going straight to the police. Ring's owner, Amazon.com, filed an eerily specific patent to put its controversial recognition facial identification software into doorbells. The purpose? To automatically flag suspicious people. Th these the surveillance? Okay. So now you have to worry. When you go to somebody's home, ring their door doorbell. A camera may very well have taken a picture of your face. Big hotel chains become arms of surveillance state, big hotel chains. Uh, working with the feds and keeping an eye on, well, they claim any women who are traveling home, uh, training staff to spot an escort, not allowing some women to drink at the bar alone. They claim it's to spot sex trafficking. All corporations work with government and they're all in on this uh, reshaping of the world for this new world order. And it is a corporate technocracy. It's a corporate uh, takeover. And yeah, people should be very, very alarmed, outraged that this is going on. But consumers, pretty much all of them, love this technology and don't care that they're being spied on. I'm not doing anything wrong. They have no idea how precious privacy is. Walgreens installing smart coolers to spy on shoppers. Walgreens in smart coolers? What? Fridges equipped with cameras that scan shoppers' faces and make inferences on their age and gender? They claim that it is not facial recognition. They just want to know what people are buying. And they segment, you know, with these cameras, these cameras. 
analyze, and segment who they capture by gender, age, and income. Wow. Uh, and then target them precisely. Do we need, do we need smart coolers? Do we really need cameras in fridges in stores when they already have and have had for decades all the data they need to find out what people are buying? Most use credit cards or ATM cards. A whole lot of people have those, um, what are they called? You know, the, the store that give out their own card so that you get discounts. All of that data is stored so they know what people are buying. Surveillance. Home tech is getting smarter and creepier. Yeah, finding an oven, uh, oven that just cooks food may be as tough as buying a TV that merely lets you change channels. Internet connected smarts are creeping into cars, refrigerators, thermostats, toys, just about everything else in your home. There was a gadget show, CES 2019, open Tuesday in Las Vegas. It showcases many of these products, including an oven that coordinates your recipes and a toilet that flushes with voice command. Geez, that's what I've always wanted. Flush. I guess that's what you have to say. Flush the shit. God. Every additional smart device in your home, companies are able to gather more details about your daily life. How many times you shit? How many times you go to the bathroom? My God, some of that can be used to help advertisers target you more precisely than they could with just the smartphone. It's decentralized surveillance, tethered to some online service, stealthily gathering our information. Yet consumers so far seem to be welcoming all of these devices. An oven can sync with your digital calendar and recommend recipes based on how much time you have. It can help coordinate multiple recipes so that you're not undercooking the side dishes in focusing too much on the entree. A camera inside lets you zoom in to see if the cheese on the lasagna has browned enough without opening the oven door. You know, one of the greatest things about cooking is learning the timing of things. And I always loved to cook and learning about cooking, right? You learn and it becomes, you know, a part of you. When your oven is telling you when a dish needs to come out, how long something has been cooking, ovens will tell you the exact space that you should uh, put a turkey in the oven for, you know, pro then you don't have to learn. It's like the GPS, right? We used to read maps that kept our brain active and working. And now suddenly we will just have zombies. They won't even need frequencies to make people zombies. They'll just be zombies because all of these gadgets and machines are telling them what to do. Yeah, it's kind of like these kids in school now have a very difficult time. Now, I see it, the young in supermarkets who are working, you know, at the cashier, uh, as a cashier. If you give them, uh, let's say the amount comes to, 
four ninety seven. If you give them five dollars and two cents, they're stumped. They don't understand why, you know, because you just want you know a nickel back. You don't want, you know, the three pennies. But they, I can see that they they don't really know how to work their brain to figure out subtraction, addition, simple, simple. Because they've grown up just calculating everything on a machine, not using their own brains to do it. Smart toilet, a smart toilet. Kohler's Numi will respond to voice commands to raise or lower the lid or to flush. You can do it from an app. The company says it's all about offering hands-free options ah! in a setting that's very personal for people, but all of that personal data is being collected and stored. The toilet is also heated and can play music. <laughs> oh boy, I can't wait for those songs to come out. Uh, and, it, well, yeah, you can also get the news through its speakers. So all of you guys who would bring the newspaper into the bathroom and you'd hog that bathroom for hours reading that newspaper, now you don't even have to read anymore. You can just listen to the news while you're sitting there. Uh, a tub that adjusts water temperature to your liking and a kitchen faucet that dispenses just the right amount of water for a recipe, a fridge that comes with an app that lets you check on its contents while you're grocery shopping. News this year, Samsung's washing machines can send alerts to its TVs. What? A smart TV, of course, so you know your laundry is ready while watching Netflix. Fishing rod that tracks your location to build an online map of where you've made the most catches. A toothbrush that recommends where to brush more. A, fragr a fragrance diffuser that lets you control how your home smells from a smartphone app. You can get that <laughs> diffusing fragrance into your home. That's poisonous, by the way. Toxic. Oh, I'm 20 minutes away from home. I think I'll start the diffusing of a toxic fragrance. How T-Mobile, Sprint, and AT&T sell your smartphone geolocation. It's worse than you thought. Selling access to their customers' location data, and that data is ending up in the hands of bounty hunters, and others not authorized to possess it, letting them track most phones in the country. So the writer of this article, Joseph Cox, he gave a bounty hunter a phone number. He had offered to geolocate a phone for me using a shady overlooked service intended not for the cops, but for private individuals and businesses armed with just the number and a few hundred dollars, he was able to locate the person's uh, location from the phone number. Selling phone geolocation services with little oversight to a spread of different private industries, ranging from car salesmen and property managers to bail bondsmen and bounty hunters Property managers? Car salesmen. All right. Um, did you know that this was going on? I didn't. Uh, it's also being resold to others on the black market who are not licensed by the company to use it, including the author of this article. So you have, you, you have money. Money talks, all right? And perhaps you have some access to some influential people in these AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile companies, you will be able to
get access to ordinary Americans' location. As your phone and TV track you, political campaigns listen in. And I've said this before, we were already living in the world of the internet. And I've actually said it in numerous videos. Think about it, Trump supporters. Think about it. We, we've already learned that Obama comes out speaking real pretty after Dunce uh, Bush. And everybody was like, oh, finally, we have a president who speaks eloquently. Oh, and he's speaking all of the words we so wanted to hear. Holding people accountable. Upholding the Constitution. Getting us out of the wars. Trump. The data that has already been collected on all of us. Collected and stored. There are people who have access to that data. With everybody on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, um, when Trump was campaigning, they had access to what Americans were upset about, the issues that were really important to them. And then you get somebody who has decided to jump in as a presidential candidate and they know exactly what to say to get support from you. It's a game to them, but they then come out and talk about, oh, what did Trump talk about? Vaccines, guns, uh, illegals crossing the border. He was able, I have no doubt, to access all of that information to find out a majority of Americans are really upset about these issues. That's what I'm going to hammer home when I go visit them and they show up for my Trump rallies. In-store cameras spot shoplifters before they steal. Yes, yeah, spotting nefarious behavior, like a scene out of the movie Minority Report, algorithms analyze security camera footage and alert staff about potential thieves via a smartphone app. So if you have a strange look on your face, uh, if you, well, there is going to be sensors around, uh, and there may already be those sensors that can detect whether you're nervous, your heart rate. Oh, well, U.S. Post Office spying on everyone who sends mail. So a lot of people think, I'm not, I'm not using this internet anymore. I'm still doing snail mail because they're protected. No. Mail cover program. So, uh, John Kariaku, who was put in jail for, what, 23 months, I think, for exposing, he was a whistleblower and exposed the torture programs of the CIA. Um, he wrote this article, Unknown federal surveillance program, one that poses a direct threat to the privacy and constitutional rights of every American. It's called Mail Cover Program. It allows postal employees to photograph and send to federal law enforcement organizations the front and back of every piece of mail the post office processes. It also retains the information digitally, digitally and provides it to any government agency that wants it without a warrant. And don't you think they have scanners to look inside boxes? I'm sure they do. Chinese style total surveillance technology coming to Detroit, to Detroit, San Diego, New Orleans, Detroit are, well, think about 
China and their surveillance of the population, New Orleans, Detroit, and San Diego are within like the top 10 cities in the United States with the incredibly intense surveillance of all people. It's a voluntary police cam share program, 1,000 surveillance camera networks, which includes 500 businesses. In San Diego, you've got these, uh, you have street lights spying on you. Detroit uses Intelli Streets, a company known to have strong ties to Homeland Security. Detroit's Project Greenlight spies on people in real time at gas stations, real, real retail stores, public housing. A map of Project Greenlight surveillance cameras shows the true extent of police spying in Detroit, and it looks an awful lot like a map of San Diego's IQ streetlights. City wants the public to help fund Detroit. <laughs> They're soliciting residents of Detroit to pay for the surveillance that will be surveilling them. <sighs> yeah, Mayor Mike Dugan sent out a citizen petition drive soliciting money from home homeowners and businesses to help pay for a new multi-million dollar surveillance program in order to continue making Detroit a safe place to live, work, and play. We are asking you to gather signatures from your neighbors pledging support for the Neighborhood Real-Time Intelligence Program. People have no clue what they are doing because they're ignorant, but they don't realize they're ignorant. Motorola and the Detroit Police Department have worked together to create their own neighborhood real-time intelligence program which spies on residents 24 hours a day. The author of this article says, I'm torn between calling Detroit America's second Chinese-style surveillance city or New Orleans, which has the dishonor of being America's largest spying network. The true extent of police spying is much worse than what is being reported, especially if you include Ring doorbells, Amazon's Ring, Nest cameras, Nest is Google, right? Which turn entire neighborhoods into mini surveillance networks. Now, I was sent this article, I Spy, how Android phones keep tabs on your every move. A study by two Spanish academics reveals the scope and lack of control over pre-installed apps on your phone that you have no control over. I want to thank my subscriber for sending this along. Android account for more than 80% of today's cell phone market. You open the box, press the on button and the phone connects to the internet. Without further ado, you have just triggered the most sophisticated surveillance machine to date for monitoring, monitoring your routines. No longer matters whether you download Facebook or activate Google. The pre-installed apps got you. Whatever you do from the moment that you turn that phone on, that's it. They got you. Your new cell phone will be sharing details of your activity with the rest of the world. The software that comes pre-installed is the most accurate resource on your phone for predicting where you might be, what you might download, what messages you might send, and what music you might listen to, but it's far more dangerous. Personal data is sent to a broad network of interested parties. Servers belonging to the cell phone's manufacturer, Facebook, Google, um, corporations, and startups that package it, tag it, sell it. They all have your personal, every bit of information you put on that Android phone. 
cell phone can have more than 100 pre-installed apps and a further 100 that are third-party libraries included in the code, many of which are specialized in monitoring the user and in advertising an international landscape of hundreds of thousands of apps with common, dubious, unknown, dangerous, potentially criminal uses, a chaotic environment of mass surveillance, with only the tip of the iceberg revealed by this year-long research. Android cell phones, not produced just by the manufacturer. The chip comes from a company. The operating system may come from another company. Uh, software added to the phone comes from other companies, operators, distributors. The result is an ecosystem so complex that all the players can sidestep the responsibility of where our personal data ends up. Google created the open code platform, but this is now available to everyone. And what belongs to everyone belongs to no one. The world of Android is like the Wild West. Each version of our Android cell phones tells its base what we are up to from the moment we turn it on without skipping a beat. All data, even if you're not using it, it's still working. It's, oh, those microphones, still on. Cameras, still on. GPS sensors in that phone. They know where you are. And you have no control. You can't turn them off. That's it. The door is wide open all the time. You know, they put apps like Google Play on, or you have to download them. Well, you have control over those. You have no control over the countless apps on, well, they're not countless, but a lot of apps that have been pre-installed. Pre-installed. Not, not so much because, ah, you're uh, researching underwear, so suddenly you get an awful lot of advertisements for underwear. No. Surveillance. They're recording your conversations via the phone. They know your location via the phone. Everyone you talk to, they connect it. You know, your social network, it's all connected. They know who you're talking to. And Facebook, I posted a video on this years ago, Facebook <clears throat> is also tracking non-users. So you have a Facebook page. You're putting up these pictures of people who don't have Facebook. You mention their name or whatever. Suddenly, Facebook is able to track those people who don't even have a Facebook page. Yeah, we are trapped in a very, very dangerous surveillance grid, but two further problems inside an operating system that has access to all the cell phone's functions, all your functions, all your functions. And you're talking about not just Microsoft or uh, whomever is selling the phone, you're talking about a network of companies that have access to your personal information, every bit of it, but also to your cell phone's functions, which means they can turn on the microphone, which means they can also download stuff into your um, phone. If they're targeting somebody, they could download porn and suddenly have the police come and arrest somebody and they're completely innocent, and they wouldn't even know that they have this on their phone. Secondly, these apps can be automatically updated, which allows them to mutate the 
operating system is the cell phone's brain. It has constant access to everything and it automatically updates. And these updates are important because a manufacturer might have given permission to a company to be on its mobile code for something innocuous. Then two months later, this can be updated, adding permission for other things such as recording conversations and accessing messages. When the needs of the tracking company change, the creators can introduce new software and new instructions. The owner of the cell phone is powerless to stop that from happening. There is no permission request requested. Uh, the operating system is simply updated. Information is massive and includes the technical characteristics of the phone, unique identifiers, location, contacts, messages, emails, not good. So, uh, I will link below to everything. You can read the full articles. Um, yeah, new cell phone. Pre-installed app that has access to the camera, contacts, and microphone. Well, I don't know about you guys. This is not a world that I have any desire to live in, I, I'd give it up in a heartbeat, but because most people are just thrilled with this new world, we are trapped in it with them. Yeah. So think about that. When you're walking around, no matter what you're doing, you're being followed. You're being watched. This is our new world. This is how it is ordered.